methodology of the ureter. The ureter is a pipe or a tube that carries urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder. This is the kidney, this is the urinary bladder. So it's like a tube that helps to propel or carry urine that is produced in the kidney down to the urinary bladder where it will be stored. And after this is filled up, there's going to be a sensation sent to the brain that will set in the hodge to urinate. The ureters are two in number. We have one on the right and one on the left because we have two kidneys. So each of them is connected to one of the kidneys and it propels the urine to be stored in the urinary bladder. There are also some features that the ureter presents that helps to prevent the backflow of urine into the kidney. The urine is not needed to be transported back into the kidney. So we have a lot of features within the internal wall of the ureter that helps to propel and push down the urine and also prevent it from flowing backward into the kidney. We already make a lecture on the ureter. You can go and check that lecture hall to gain more knowledge in this area. This lecture will be focusing just on the histology of the ureter. So microscopically, if a section of the ureter is processed and viewed under the microscope, this is what we would see. So let's look at what the ureter contains in terms of microscopic features when viewed under the microscope. So knowing the basics, the histological component of the ureter is divided into three. We have the tunica adventitia layer, and this is the tunica adventitia layer. This is the most external layer of the ureter. Then deep to that, we have the muscular layer, and this is the muscular layer. The muscular layer is a smooth type of muscle because it's an involuntary type of muscle and it is not striated. It's involuntary because we cannot control their action. We do not have power over the action that they exhibit. It's involuntary. And also they are not striated type of muscle. They are not like skeletal muscle that is striated. So we have a smooth type of muscle that is located in the middle part of the ureter. Then Deep to the muscular layer, we have the inner mucosa layer. This is the inner mucosa layer. You can see that the inner mucosa layer presents some form of configuration and it tends to give the lumen, which is the central core or opening of the tube that is called the ureter. It tends to give it a star-shaped appearance. So we take these subdivisions one after the other to see what their microscopic features present. The tunica adventitia layer, we already said that it is the most external layer. It is made up of loose connective tissue. And within this connective tissue, you see the deposit of adipocytes, which are fat cells. You can see the distribution of this white looking cell around the external part of the ureter. These are the adipocytes. And this is seen amidst of a loose connective tissue. Also in the tunica adventitia layer, you see that they have blood vessels, they have nerves, and also lymphatic vessels. So it is in this region that you have those structures located. Then the muscular layer. The muscular layer is the layer that is actually responsible for the function that the ureter exhibits, which is to propel urine that is produced in the kidney down to the urinary bladder where it will be stored. This propelling activity occurs as a result of peristaltic movement. Peristaltic movement is a periodic contraction and expansion. So when there's peristaltic movement, as it is contracting and relaxing, it is pushing the content that is located within it down. So that periodic contraction and relaxation is called peristaltic movement. And the ureter is able to do this because of its muscular layer, which is the middle layer that is located between the tunica adventitia layer and the mucosa layer. So let's look at the muscular layer to see what they present. The muscular layer, we already said that is a small type of muscle because it's an involuntary type of muscle. We cannot control the action. We cannot say now the ureter begin to push urine from the kidney down to the urinary bladder. We do not have power over that. Looking at the muscular layer, it is further subdivided into layers. So we have the upper two third have two layers. The lower one third is made up of three layers. For the upper two third, we have the outer circular layer and the inner longitudinal layer. So this is like the inner longitudinal layer where the fibers are running vertically. Then we have the outer circular layer where the fibers are running in a circular pattern. So we have a circular pattern on the outside. On the inside, you have vertical running fibers. 
In the inferior one third, you have three sub layers, the inner longitudinal fibers, you have the middle circular fibers, and you have the outer longitudinal fibers. So we have two layers above, and we have three layers below. The difference in layers is able to give more strength to the lower part of the ureter because the lower part is tailing towards its emptying into the urinary bladder. At this region, there's going to be more generation of peristaltic action. So there's going to be a hard push for the content that is located within the ureter so that they can finally go into the urinary bladder. So at the lower part, they need more strength to push the urine into the urinary bladder. And that is why you have an extra part of muscle within the lower one third. And if you look at the configuration of the muscular layer, you see some breakage. And this breakage helps to justify that the muscular layer are in subset. So there's a breakage here. There's another breakage around this region, which means that they are actually sublayered. So all in all, the muscular activity that is being generated in this layer is a peristaltic type of movement where we already said that we have contraction and relaxation. And as they contract and relax, they are able to drive along the content that is located within it so that they are finally being pushed into the urinary bladder for storage. Then the last layer is the mucosa layer. The mucosa layer are the most deepest layer and the innermost layer. It's this layer that actually lines the lumen of the ureter. And this is the lumen, this is the central opening. You see that this opening is not round, it is star-shaped. You already know that mucosa lining are majorly formed by epithelium. But the type of epithelium that you see in the ureter is a transitional type of epithelium. It's seen in four or five layers within this region and they run like that, creating a star-shaped appearance of the lumen. Why we have a transitional type of epithelium here, yeah, it's that the epithelium lining are not specific. They tend to change depending on the situation at hand. It actually depends on what is contained within the ureter that determines the shape of this epithelium. That is why they say they are transitional, always transiting from one form to the other, depending on the content of the ureter. So if the ureter is in a normal state, you may see this type of epithelium, like a cuboidal form of epithelium, arranged in like four or five layers. But when it is distended or it is filled with urine, it means that there is a form of elasticity that has occurred. So it tends to stretch. And this is the type of epithelium you see in that case. This epithelium are flat. So the epithelium will become flat when it is filled with urine. When it is in a normal state, they are going to be cuboidal epithelium. You cannot specifically say that it is lined by a squamous type of epithelium or a cuboidal type of epithelium. It depends on what it contains. If it contains urine and it has expanded, there's going to be a stretch and the epithelium lining is going to be flat. But if it is in a normal state, they are going to be seen as cuboidal epithelium. Also to say that between the muscular layer and the mucosa layer, there is an intermediate connective tissue layer that is made up of collagen fibers. So the mucosa layer is not just lining directly on the, the muscular layer. Between the muscular layer and the mucosa layer, we have another layer that is called the lamina propria that is made up of connective tissue that is rich in collagen fiber. And we know that collagen fibers give tensile strength to structures. So they are able to stretch and also regain their elasticity after emptying. The lamina proper also helps to hold the mucosa lining in place, seeing line deep to the mucosa lining. So they help to hold them in place and the mucosa lining gives a form of protection to the internal wall of the ureter. So thank you for watching this video. Let's meet again in our next lecture class.